And we back. We got some controversy in this list. Chat box, tell me if you know the discrepancy that y'all think we about to run into. I know a lot of y'all have gotten the heads up on uh, different platforms, but some of y'all are brand new here, so we're going to keep the spoilers to a minimum. But I do want conversation in this chat box. Plus, um, later on tonight at uh, 6 Central, we're going to be talking about this in full length. Y'all can call into the show. We can have a full-blown discussion on my wide receiver rankings. We did 12 on the last few of them, but we're going to do 15 on the wide receiver rankings because there's so many of them I feel like it's important I feel like we need that extra few spots to really um you know to really get those names out there so this should be fun uh so what we're gonna do just like with the other rankings I'm gonna tell you who the guys are how I think they fit you know where they're gonna play on the field and uh I'm gonna compare them to their peers right and why they're ranked over or under somebody this should be fun also something else we're gonna do that's brand new this year we're gonna talk about two guys uh on this one we're gonna talk about two guys that did not make my top 15 one guy that I did not like one guy that I did like so hey man let's uh let's get this going man kj hill was my uh was my guy that did not make the list that i wasn't really a fan of um in a class full of smaller receivers that move really well that catch really well that are kind of spectacular athletes he was the smaller receiver that didn't do much physically very well uh now was he good at he's good at getting open he's a pretty cool route runner he's going to be a slot guy to do things for you there uh he just wasn't as dynamic as the other smaller guys and um you know to be fair kj hill could probably probably be one of those dudes that you know uh uh that proves me wrong and goes out into the league and just ends up being a third down machine this ain't this ain't saying that he's you know going to be a bad Bad player. I just didn't think he deserved to be in this top 15 or so. So that's that KJ Hill from Ohio State. Shouts out to him though. And uh, the one guy that I did like that did not make my list was uh, Len Bowden. And I think we need to have a conversation about him with some pretty good depth. Uh, I see some people comparing him to uh, any quarterback that was any pardon me any receiver that's a former quarterback that's a that's a real thing there any receiver that's a former quarterback uh that he he's been kind of uh compared to them and i don't think that's fair because i don't think lynn bowden was that cool of a quarterback i think when he was asked to play quarterback he ended up having like 30 carries i thought he played running back that game i looked up his stat numbers and he had like 30 carries this game i was like damn he played running back too well he lined up at the quarterback position they ran his option he would either pitch it or he'll keep it and go up the middle and that's how they would run run offense in Kentucky other times he'll have six catches and 130 so you know what I mean receiving yards so I think it's going to be interesting when we have that nuanced conversation about Lynn Bowden but I like him as an athlete and I don't mind y'all liking him as an athlete but we're not gonna go crazy over uh two possible uh you know trick fake just sweep throws uh uh per season we're not gonna lose our mind over that but Lynn Bowden he's the other guy I like but uh let's get into my list list Let's run this for the cardio. First one on my top 15 list. Number 15 is uh, Michael Pittman Jr. Uh, from USC, the YouTuber. Uh, I have a love-hate relationship with bigger receivers because sometimes bigger receivers uh, come with bigger receiver problems. They don't always separate the best. Sometimes they're not the fastest. Uh, they're not the best route runners in the world. And those are things that I that I hold uh, in a very high regard. Speed, separation, route running. Um, but Michael Pittman... First of all, he's way down this list because of a lot of these things. So let's just be fair there. He is at 15. But the one thing I do like about him, I got a couple big guys on my list. Um, he's kind of he's kind of smooth with his route running okay like he he doesn't move like a bigger lumbering dude but his physicality helps him get open right and and not from a uh from a pre break off the top of the stem type of way but in a i'm gonna fight through the football and you're gonna have a hard time fighting through me fighting through you you see what i mean like it's gonna be a fight all the way until the ball gets to his hands and i kind of like that tenacity in him so if i had to go get a bigger dude it'll be that kind of guy now you take michael pittman and that level of getting open that i just talked about that's the perfect combination of a bigger slot receiver okay just a guy that's gonna come in and 
probably do some crossing routes, go over the middle and body guys into the middle. Use his um, use his arm length, use his size or whatever and his height and catch slants and run through people and catch through traffic. That's what Michael Pittman is really good at. He's good at catching passes in traffic. Um, so I'm a big fan fan of that in particular. But um, he got the nod over some of the other bigger receivers, guys like Colin Johnson, who's not going to be on this list. He got the nod over him uh, because of some of the other things he does well, you know, the, the routes and the separation of all that. Juwan Jennings, a lot of people ain't got Juwan Jennings that high, but I think if you sometimes we overcomplicate football right we overcomplicate it and at one point i did too and once upon a time we used to draft we used to draft and evaluate prospects based on what they couldn't do oh this guy can't do that that and that i don't want him i want a guy that whatever whatever i think we are now getting into a space to where we're going to get guys and only do things that they're good at and then you think about new football you think about rub routes you think about a lot of guys that do things in the um quick passing game san francisco does a lot of it um i think jawan jennings can exist in the national football league as a quick game yak big guy he's another dude that can play um that could be a a big slot receiver for you now can he play on the outside and probably give you like some red zone threat stuff sure he could possibly do that but what i want jawan jennings to do is however you do it get the ball in his hands as quick as you possibly can it could be a screen bubbles like we could do rub routes or whatever whatever you want to do hell tennessee just lined them up at quarterback and gave them the ball out the backfield and ran options with them right however you get the ball in Jawan jennings hands give it to him because ain't nobody gonna tackle him right maybe the fifth person if the first four people did the right thing they'll tackle him go watch his south carolina game go watch him versus missouri they have a hard time getting hands on this dude right and the first guy never brings him down i'm a big fan of that and if you put him in a situation to where he can be that guy like that to where he doesn't have to worry about running routes he doesn't have to worry about having the entire route tree at his disposable at his disposal do what he's good at do what he's good at and that's getting the ball in his hands and uh being a yak guy so uh, that's Juwan James from uh, from uh, Tennessee. Now, really late down this list, right? 15, 14, in my 13th spot, uh, LaVisca Chenault, right? He was getting some first-round consideration. I think that kind of went down a little bit. A lot of people talking about him in the second-round considerations. I'm looking I'm looking at LaVisca Chenault as a little bit later than that. Um, I think the, the one thing that puts Chenault over these two guys is that uh, he can move a little – you know faster than them now his 40 time wasn't the best but if you watch his film he can move around a little bit and, and he's another guy that's hard to tackle so uh Chenault, just like juan jennings is going to be a guy uh that he he won't be super technical receiver guy and i think that's okay everything's okay now especially wide receivers there's so many ways to win with wide receivers if you get Chenault open Right. Uh, sometimes Colorado will put him at quarterback or running back or whatever. Um, I think he's another guy that's going to catch a bunch of slants, hitches, quick game stuff, jailbreak screens. And he's going to be a dude that's hard to tackle. But him being hard to tackle and Juwan Jennings being hard to tackle, they're similar in being hard to tackle. But Jennings ain't coming down. Um, Chanel is a little quicker than him, a little harder to catch, you know, just, a, you know, some extra moves thrown in. So LaVisca Chanel has a small a small advantage over Jawan Jennings. Plus, I think Chanel can do more technical receiver things than Jennings. But and let's get into my next guy, Devin Duvernay, um, who's a little smaller than the other guys we previously talked about. But uh, that's all good. He's going to be a slot receiver, pretty good player. I first saw him in the LSU game where he was smoking hell out of all the LSU kids, and that's okay. Um, I think – Devin Duvernay, even though he was the slot guy, he was, um, I think he was the favorite receiver in that offense. Though I could be wrong, but just based on what I saw, he seemed to be the favorite, the guy that was getting all of the uh, targets, the guy that was most relied upon. What I like about him is once he gets in, gets the ball in his hands, he's really hard to tackle as well. He's another guy that's a that's a running back kind of sort of with the ball in his hands. We're going we're gonna to have a lot of guys like that, like a lot of quick game guys, a lot of yak guys, a lot of running back with the ball in their hand guys. Devin Duvernay is one of those guys. Um also like him because he also uh he he gives you something in the vertical game you know sometimes you'll get some of these um some of these uh smaller receivers and they won't give you anything vertically they'll just run a slant they'll run their little hitch route they'll get tackled not Devin Duvernay he'll he'll get down them seams quick he'll hitch to the outside he'll get in the end zone 
How about this next guy? We got uh, Gabriel Davis from UCF. I call him Odell Beckham, little cousin. If you Google him, you got the Odell Beckham hair, the Odell Beckham number, the Odell Beckham tattoos. He wants to model his game uh, upon Odell Beckham. That's why I call him his little cousin. I don't know if they're really related, but whatever. Um, I talked about big receivers earlier and what I don't like about big receivers. I don't like, uh, all, you know, they don't always have good releases, route running speed, things like that. Well, we have a couple of big receivers on this list that can run. Gabriel Davis is a bigger receiver on this list that can indeed run. Um, big fan of his. He gets really vertical. Um, I think he got some solid speed combine nerds. Hit me with the number. I know his game speed was good. I wasn't really focused on what his combine stuff was, but y'all can hit me with his uh, measurements and his 40 time, if you will. But um, like I said, man, solid hands. And I like him as a red zone threat, too. He really had a nose for the end zone. It seemed like when you watching when you watching him play, he was making plays in the end zone. He was going to score touchdowns, and you can never get enough of scoring touchdowns. What I liked about him the most is that he's a big guy that can run. You can't go wrong with those guys too, too much. I would love to see what happens with his NFL career and what team drafts him. Um, I have another my guy on this list. Juwan James was the first my guy, but Van Jefferson is another my guy. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. My number 10 guy. So we in the top 10, uh, top 10 territory. That's good. Good news. Good news. So Van Jefferson, big fan of Van Jefferson. Big, big, big fan of him. What I like about him is that he's a nuanced route runner, but he's even better than that. He's better than being just a nuanced route runner, right? Like, I love um, guys that, you know, run routes with creativity. They don't just rely on their quickness or speed um, to get them open in their route running. Like, they're setting guys up. They're one step ahead. They're, you know, selling the image of, hey, I'm going outside, 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 just to work back inside just for it to turn into a fade. Very Amari Cooper-like, and I'm not gassing him when I say that, but when you look at the level of route running, Van Jefferson is up there with him. Uh, why isn't Van Jefferson higher on this list? Well, you know, you can look at speed and size, and you can put all those factors, you know, all, all those factors can add up or whatnot, but why is he higher? higher than these cats well i've seen him produce uh, i've seen him play against top tier talent and the route running is a really big deal for me he really releases from these people um and the the biggest body on his list is Derek stingley who as a freshman was one of the better cornerbacks in the country this year and van jefferson's route running kind of put him on front street so that ain't gonna be able to happen with everybody but it happened with van jefferson and he gets respect on my list for that Mm -hmm. Now, let's get into uh, another portion of players on my list. KJ Hamler, who's not the route runner that Van Jefferson is. But, you know, when you talk about speed guys, right, you talk about Henry Ruggs, who's going to go out and do the who went out and did the uh, four two eight things. There's two other guys. One guy we're going to talk about in the that spot. But the other guy is right here. KJ Hamler is a legit, let's say, early four three guys, right? Let's say four three two guy. Uh, Cause we ain't see him run a run a four two. We ain't see him run nothing. But on film, he is a super dynamic, explosive, electric football player. Um, he has his flaws, which lands him further down this list. Like I said, he's not the greatest route runner in the world. He's not even the the greatest complete receiver in the world. But we talk about usage. We talk about what are you good at, and let's do some of the things that you are good at. And KJ Hamler is a guy that can fly. You know. Um, some people were, were telling me about, well, Vach, what about his uh, what about his drop rates? You know, he he drops a lot of passes. Cool. Hand the ball to him. Give him just sweeps. Uh, throw him easy pass. Don't let him go downfield too much, <laughs> even though that would be hindering him. Um, I don't he, he's 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 not going to drop every pass and he's not going to get a drop every game. Um, he will have his fair share of drops. But um, KJ Hamler, he's going to get the ball in his hands. and He's going to be quick and fast and dynamic. So I'm a big fan of all that. So. Let's not hate on my guy because he's dropping passes out here, even though as a receiver, that's your first job. Brandon Ayuk, um, fan of him as well. I think what separates him from these last two guys is that he kind of uh, he kind of puts the size and the athletic ability together along with them. You know what I mean? Uh, Brandon Ayuk is, uh, I think he's a little taller than KJ. I think he's in the six foot range. Uh, combine nerds help me out. I think Brandon Ayuk is in the um, six foot range. He's a guy that can play inside and outside. I'm putting him like as a flanker type of dude. I think that's a safe place for him. But he's another guy that gives you uh, verticality. 
right? Can you get vertical? Can you get downfield? Uh, make catches at every level of the football field. I think Brandon Ayuk is one of those guys. Plus, he gives you some dynamic ability in the yak game. Y'all know I love my yak game, okay? We get drunk off yak on my channel. And um, Jalen Rager. Jalen Rager is the combination of these two guys, right? We're talking about um, why is Ayuk over Hamler? Well, because I think he's a complete receiver that kind of gives you uh, gives you more than just handing the ball off to him or just short passes. Rager, you take KJ Hamler's speed and you take Brandon Ayuk's receiver stuff and down the field ability and yak stuff, that same electrifying run style, quickness, speed, explosion, you got Jalen damn Rager. Um, you kind of get some of the drops too. <laughs> hey man, look, hey look, when we doing the fusion dance, you can't pick the traits. You can't pick the traits that you keep and let go. And if we gonna make these dudes do the fusion dance, KJ Hamler's drops kind of spilled over into Jalen Rager a little bit. Jalen Rager, uh, I think Rager's problem was he had a lot of focus drops. Rager wanted to um, get going so fast. He wanted to just turn the Jets on so quick, he ended up dropping some passes. But focus drops are indeed drops as well, my good friend. But <clears throat> Um, fan of the player, man, dynamic, quick, fast, uh, can make plays downfield, line them up inside and outside. Preferably, I'm playing them in the slot, preferably, but you don't want to keep them in there all game because you want to, um, you want to give that, that deep outside threat as well. So he's, uh, he's another candidate for putting me at, at flanker and let me fly. But, um, that's Jalen Rager, man, big fan of him. How about this? Let's take a look at uh, Denzel Mims. He's my, so at this point, it's like what, my number six guy, right? Denzel Mims from Baylor. Now, he's another one of my big guys that can run. Just a red zone threat, a guy that's gonna jump over people. The 50-50 ball is ridiculous. The, uh, the catch radius is outstanding. He got long speed physical player. I like me some Denzel Mims, man. He just kind of climbed and climb throughout this progress progress process climb throughout this uh throughout this um process or whatever and he's gained a lot of fans i think he's getting a bunch of um um first round hype as of late um and i think i think he deserves man i think he deserves to be in that um to be in that that top that top handful of guys now what makes denzel mims like better than you know these cats that we just that we just talked about or whatever well denzel mims first of all is bigger than these guys he's about he's about gabriel davis size i think chad boss will help me out with that with the sizes and measurements or whatever he's a bigger player his catch radius is better is he he's not as fast as hamler and rager he's not that kind of explosive runny guy but he is speed guy so you put all those things together plus plus this red zone presence that uh denzel mims has that you just can't beat it with a stick he's my number six guy and i'm not moving him I'm not moving them. Uh, T Higgins, in which I think both these guys are pretty similar in how they play in terms of they both use catch radius. They both um, have that long top speed. They both are red zone threats. They both body guys. You know, they get guys away from them so they can extend and catch the football. You know, they, they both put those things together really well. But I think the one thing that puts Higgins over Mims, over everybody else, um, I really think the the competition that the competition that T Higgins eventually ran into eventually ran into because ACC was kind of weird, but you know, big 12 is kind of worse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, um, uh, T Higgins did eventually run into some, some, uh, some pretty talented competition on the back end of his season. And he showed up pretty well against those guys. He had uh three touchdowns in the championship game. Uh, he showed up pretty well against the Ohio state kids or whatever. Um, and you already know, you know, the the uh, championship vibes, of course. But uh, that's the one thing that put T Higgins over the edge for me. The the uh, the not only the competition that he played against, but the uh, pedigree. This ain't the first time T Higgins. Um, this ain't his first rodeo or whatever. So um, experience and all that kind of stuff kind of plays a role, too. So um, T Higgins is my guy here at uh, number wherever we at. Number five, I believe. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty of these top handfuls of guys we know who these top guys are but some of y'all are knocking on my door saying hey Vach, you know you got henry ruggs right there in the fourth spot is he supposed to be there 
yeah, Henry Ruggs supposed to be there in the fourth spot. Um, you take the speed from uh, from Rager and Hamler. He's faster than those guys. You take the speed. He's bigger than those guys. I think he runs routes a little bit better than those guys. He's more complete than those guys. Um, you know, he, he's, a, he's a dynamic player. You know, people compare him to uh, Tyreek Hill. I mean, I think he may be a... A complete, I don't want to say more of a complete receiver. I'll say this, Tyreek Hill developed into a complete receiver. Tyreek Hill coming out of college, I wouldn't say is the same guy that he is now. He had that raw natural speed, um, but he wasn't complete at that point. I say that Henry Ruggs is closer to complete than Tyreek Hill was when he was coming out of college. But he's my number four receiver for a, I think, a handful of good reasons. A handful of good reasons. Um, and his running mate is right over him at my number three spot. Now, the distance between these guys, right? I think that Ruggs is in the same caliber as Higgins, Rager, and Mims. I think they're in similar calibers, Ruggs is. But I think he's better than them by like, let's say he's better than them by like an inch. No, let's say better by a foot. Because I do consider... uh uh. I do consider Henry Ruggs to be a, a full blown first round pick. So let's say he's better than them by a foot. Jerry Judy is even better than Henry Ruggs. Jerry Judy is better than Ruggs and these last few guys because Jerry Judy is as close to a complete receiver that we've seen on this list in terms of, hey, does he, you know, does he check off these, the, um, I'm, I'm six foot and not consider a little receiver? Um, check mark he checks that off uh do i have speed yes game breaking ability have i been a number one receiver have i played against big competition nasty route runner if van jefferson wasn't the nastiest route runner in the class then jerry judy would be the nastiest route runner in the class um yeah got all that good stuff all these marks that i have marked on jerry judy it comes out to him being a fantastic number one receiver, right? And he's about a foot better than Henry Ruggs. But here's my problem, which ain't really a problem. We just ain't, we just haven't been talking about it. I had to put these two in a box by themselves. I took them two away from the class and I compared them two together, just, just them two, right? I got Jordan Jefferson, pardon me, Justin, I think Jordan's brother, Justin Jefferson better than Jerry Judy by an inch though, just by a little bit. This is why. All those things that we just said about Jerry Judy, not only does Justin Jefferson do it better, but he does it better than Jerry Judy, except for the route running, okay? So let's put this into some context, right? We're talking about size, it's bigger. You know, like wingspan, all that good stuff. 40 time, similar. Judy is the better route runner, but Jefferson is also a great route runner in his own right, right? Um, they're both slide receivers. They both can also play outside. Um, the one underrated, the, the one underrated trait that I give Justin Jefferson is, you know how Joe Burrow was smart in terms of reading like defenses? I think Justin Jefferson was just as smart when it when it came to reading defenses, right? You know, those option routes, stuff like let me know exactly how much leverage I need. Let me know exactly when to cut my route off. Let me know exactly where the first down line is. Let me know exactly where to extend something. I know right when the ball is coming my way. So, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. I think that kind of stuff puts um, puts certain receivers over other receivers because everybody ain't got that. Everybody ain't got that. Somebody will run blindly into into zone coverage. We've seen plenty of times on on film where, you know, Jefferson could be crossing, but he'll just have a feel for that zone coverage. He'll cut that thing short. Joe will find him. He'll find Joe. Boom. Catch it. And it's easy to build chemistry with a quarterback when you think like a quarterback. You know, um, you ever heard uh, you ever heard like um, Aaron Rodgers talk about Randall Cobb? They talk about how Randall Cobb used to play quarterback, so he has the brain of a quarterback, so he kind of knows what's happening prior to it happening. I think Justin Jefferson got that same stuff in him, and you can't beat that. You can't beat that with a stick. And I think Jefferson coming out running that 40 really put people on notice, right? Now, I didn't need that 40. 
I didn't need that 40 necessarily to know that Jefferson was fast because we always we 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 saw his speed because he has game speed. He's fast in the game. So we didn't need his 40 time to really tell us that. But his 40 time really put him over the edge, man. And you know how sometimes you'll have a receiver and like, oh, they'll have a bad game somewhere. Nah, man, Justin Jefferson. Listen, man, Justin Jefferson had a good game every game. If his if his yardages wasn't in the triple digits, he got a touchdown or or you know somewhere. Or if he you know uh, didn't get a touchdown, he had like uh, he had a at least a hundred or something y'all, at least a hundred um, receiving yards. Um, I think pedigree is a real thing. I think production is a real thing. People want to say, well, Vach, he had Joe Burrow. Well, shit, he had to get open. He had to get open. He had to beat the cornerback in front of him. He had to find the zone. He had to catch the ball. He had to still be yak guy. He had to be fast. He had to get into the red zone. He had to have a feel for the back of the end zone. He had to have these things. I don't care who the hell was that quarterback because he was good before Joe Burrow was the GOAT. To be fair, then on top of that, yes, this dude had Joe Burrow, but these dudes had Tua Tonga Valoa. That dude had Trevor Lawrence. I don't know who the hell played quarterback for Baylor. Um... I think I know him. I, he'll probably come out next year or something. I don't know. I know of him. I've seen him play before. He's solid. But these quarterbacks can play. The quarterbacks on your screen, they can play. So I don't really want to get into the whole, oh, Joe Burrow. Did, well, well, Vach, um, 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 Henry Ruggs had Jerry Judy. Jerry had Henry Ruggs. He had uh, uh, Jamar Chase. He had J. Much. So Justin Jefferson was in the same circumstances as these guys. Same circumstances. Run game was fantastic. Pros on the offensive line. Receivers around them. Coaching. Quarterbacks. What else you want to say? But I think we got so accustomed to people saying Jerry Judy is the first or second best receiver that we're not opening our minds up to consider somebody else. Well, I remember these 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 four touchdowns that he's throwing up right here versus Oklahoma. I remember these four. It wasn't cute. <laughs> it wasn't cute. It happened fast in a hurry. That's also killer instinct at receiver. It happened. Competitiveness at receiver. I don't know, man. Y'all can call it what you want to. Um, all these things mean something to me. And um, I said all those things, and these guys are very similar. Let me also say two more things. I'm moving on to my number one guy who should be clear at this point. Jerry Jude is a fantastic player. He don't suck. Henry Ruggs is a fantastic player. He don't suck. Uh, T. Higgins is a fantastic player. I don't think he should be ranked up here with these guys, but he's fantastic. He don't suck. If any of you have Judy or Ruggs or Higgins better than, than Jefferson, I don't hate you. But I just simply gave you an eight-minute soliloquy on why I believe Justin Jefferson is the number two receiver in his class. Also, on top of that, though, can I be real for a second? Um, the one last thing that kind of put Jefferson over the edge with uh, Jerry Judy, and y'all don't lie because every one of y'all has said this at some point while watching Jerry Judy because I trust y'all as film evaluators. I, I Like, in order to watch my channel, you have to be a film evaluator. We saw Jerry Judy drop some footballs. Jerry Judy had like what four five drops now I know I said earlier drops won't kill you and to be fair don't be afraid to draft Jerry Judy he'll drop one or two but that don't mean he's droppy I don't think I seen no drops from Jefferson he may have one on a weird pass or something but that's the one thing that'll if 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 that's the one thing that put him over the edge then do your thing player but Jordan Jefferson Justin I keep wanting to call him Jordan because the LSU thing. Justin Jefferson is my number two wide receiver, and I feel like I had to talk about him for a long ass time because this is my most controversial pick on these lists, on this list. And of course, my number one guy is uh Sidarian Lamb. He's fantastic. He's amazing. Um also what 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 kind of puts him over put puts him over the top. I know we just talked about how fantastic these quarterbacks were, like the guys that's throwing that's throwing the balls to these guys. Um, man, you realize how bad Jalen Hurts is when you when you watch CeeDee Lamb film. CeeDee Lamb probably could have had an had an extra five hundred yards on his total if uh if Hurts would would just not miss the read, get the ball to him and just whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? Um but in terms of fifty fifty ball, he can play at all the receiver spots. He's the best with the ball in his hands, bro. Like ball in hand, what can you do now? <laughs> like, are you going to come tackle me ball in hand? You know what I mean? CeeDee Lamb is the best in his class at that. 
um 50 50 ball guy fantastic hands guy um i know he ran the uh the four the uh four five forty and i hope teams kind of get nervous about that because i want him at dallas at 17 or whatever um i know that makes people people kind of nervous or whatnot but hey it is what it is y'all can go on somewhere play it i don't care um cd lamb is my number one receiver i'm trying to get that dude on my team as quick as possible um I was gonna make a quick point about something. Was it ball in his hands? Da da da. Boom boom. I don't know. Yes, the competition, right? Level of competition. So he didn't play the level of competition that these guys had. They had to deal with SEC stuff, and they had it pretty easy or whatever. But um, the one thing that uh, you know, watching CD Lamb was okay. So he's playing Oklahoma. He's playing. In, he's playing against these Big Twelve schools. I need to see CD Lamb have a good game against some real competition. You know what I mean? And um, when I saw C.D. Lamb, what he did versus Texas, who I consider competition, versus Texas, and then LSU was the real test. I'm like, if C.D. Lamb can have a good game versus LSU, then we good to go. And he had like 100-some yards and a touchdown, I believe, versus LSU. So, um, hey, if that's that's two first-round corners on that team. You know, one's the first rounder this year, one's going to be a first-rounder in two years. So that's that kind of put me over the edge with, uh, with uh, C.D. Lamb. I think he's the best. People ask me for uh, – you know, like player comparisons or whatever. There's no comparison with C.D. Lamb. People have heard me say Nuke, uh, Nuke Hopkins, but I'm only saying that because I felt like Nuke Hopkins was was the best receiver in the in the uh, league last year. But I'm not comparing the two. I don't think there's a receiver that compares to C.D. Lamb. Now he may have the build of a Nuke Hopkins, but when he gets the ball in his hands, like then what? <laughs> right him run, him running routes him being 50 50 ball guy you put those those uh those traits together like now what you know now is he the most nuanced right around the world nah man because i mean that'll be that'll be judy i think um jefferson's a better route runner um man who are some of the other guys i had uh Da, da, da. Yeah, Jefferson, of course, sure. Yeah, okay, so yeah, he's he, he's about right there in terms of route runners. He's about the seventh or so. He's in a second tier guy. He's a second tier guy in terms of, of being a route runner. He's not an elite top tier route runner. He do, but he does run enough routes to get him uh, to get him open. But this goes back to my other point. If he doesn't get open with route running, here's my notion. Teach his ass how to run routes and don't put him in compromising position that'll have him running routes he's not good at running. Let him run routes. He's good at running. Get the ball in his hands and let him be hard to tackle. That's what he's good at. That's what he's good at. Anyway, I don't want to hold y'all too, too long, man. I know I, I went real long on these top five picks, but I feel like I had to. Uh, I was going to drop this yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and drop this thing tonight, man. I ain't got nothing else to do. Um, so it's uh, Wednesday right now. I was going to drop this on Thursday, but we're going to go ahead and run it for the cardio. So y'all can go ahead and get this in your life. So, um, we're going to be doing uh, a live draft show for the first round and the second uh, for day one and day two of the draft live on my show. I'm going to be doing a pregame show an hour before. I'm going to take calls and let y'all talk about predictions, all that kind of stuff. And then I'm going to... Um then I'm going to do a post game show and let y'all react. So it's going to be like a seven hour stream. It's going to be a big gangster party, but we've done all our research and all of our studying. This is the big payoff. Shouts out, shouts out to all my Patreon people. I have a mock draft in my top 50 board over there. Uh, y'all go check that out if you want to. And uh, y'all hold it down for the Doski Wilson and Peace Kiwiski, man. Till next time. Salute. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing to my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.